Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And remember, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at odd-oracle.com. That's odd-oracle.com. Tim Wood, what's going on? Well, I sent you over uh, actually four charts, and uh, let's take a look at chart one. Okay. I have um, it. All right, uh, which is basically the SPYs. And um, I have uh, two shaded areas there um, yes. that are uh, pink. Anyhow, the first one, I have open gap. That day was uh, September, or no, September, so July 12th. And that day had 91 million shares. Uh, so, and that was a gap up. So, uh, when I sent you over this chart, we didn't touch that gap yet. Well, at the end of day today, we did touch that gap. So, the day is not over yet. We got... Oh, about 70 million traded right now. But if we hit less than, well, 10% less than 91 million shares, which is what, 80, yeah. 81 or 82, somewhere 82 through 83 million shares, then that would be a test of a gap on lighter volume. Okay. And that would be, uh, what well, might be, be support. We also had yesterday, we had a trend close of one point. One seven. I like to see one point two. It's not written in stone, but around one point two seems be enough panic in the market to really suggest a low. But last Friday we had a trend one point seven nine, pretty close in the same area. So if you notice when these trends get in panic areas, they, can, they all they all kind of do it in the same area. Yes. So um, that's what's happening here. So we went down and. Uh, broke broke below, a little bit below Friday's low, but we got panic again. And you know, I like to see the, the trend or the tick rather close around at least minus two hundred, preferably high, lower than that. And last Friday we had four hundred fourteen, and yesterday we had two hundred eight. So not quite as much panic, but still panic. So I'm thinking we're making a low. Um, I think today again. Now, uh, and, and when you're saying that, when you're saying the ticks, uh, you're looking at the closing tip. Tick, right, Tim? Yeah, just yeah. close. Yeah, just okay. close. When everything gel, interday, um, I've tried those studies in the past. Yeah, we really used to have two of them. You get the not, first not, one, the, the, you know, if the, the within three days, seventy percent of the the big one, right? Yeah, right. Okay. All right. So you know, so yeah, these are all in a close, and so uh, yesterday's volume picked up a little bit uh, when I put my uh, buy signal out yesterday. I didn't know what the volume was going to be. I thought it was going to be lighter. It turns out it was a little bit heavy, heavier. And that implies yesterday's low is going to be tested. Well, it is testing. And we also came didn't touch the gap yesterday, but today we did touch the gap, even though this chart doesn't show it because it's inner day. Uh, but we touched the gap, so I'm um, concluding probably today's volume is going to be lighter, 10% lighter than the, the gap volume. So anyhow, so if we can't get through the gap, can't get through the previous lows, you'll try to take out the previous highs or go back up to the gap area. So I'm thinking during expiration week, I don't know if the rally really starts tomorrow or, or Monday, but probably expiration week, we're going to go up and uh, test the upper gap, which is the August 2nd gap. And the same thing will apply if you test that those gaps on lighter volume. I didn't write down the volumes, but... You look like close to 100 million shares in that range. So we go back to 454 and volume drops, say, to 90 million shares. That gap's going to be resistance. So I'm thinking that was, this is what's going down right now is an A. We go up to a B, then we go down to a C is what I'm thinking what's happening here. So It's um, quite a sell-off today, man. I mean, you know, we had a spread in the S&P of 60 points from highs to low. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it get, it gets. I know I was close enough. I I thought we'd go touch the gap, and and here we are. Um, I might got the closing low uh, the day before. It wasn't really that much room because if we do go to four fifty four and find resistance, it's only about a percent up. And to me, that was not worth the risk. If I got two or more percent, then I'd take the trade. Yep. And if if uh, if you take yesterday's close and and we do get to 454, that's at least 2%, so that's worth my while. So, right. Um, so, anyhow, that's what it looks like on a short term basis. So, I'm, I'm thinking we're making a low, probably some sort of rally during the expiration week. We get up to that gap up above, and we can't get through that, then we'll turn back down again. 
So, and the more times you test the gap, the more re- the less resistance that or support that gap has. Yes. So we touched it today. If we do rally up, and we only touch that top gap one time and finds resistance, we go down again. That gap won't be the gap at um, uh, July twelfth won't be res- won't be support anymore because. If you, because it'll be the second time you test that gap, and normally the second time you, you pass through. So we'll see how it works. You know, there's a bunch of garbage in here, so it's it's not like a trending market. Um, but so so anyhow, it, it's it is what it is. So right? No, it, no, it, no it, I, I get it. I get it. Trust me, I get it. Yeah. So, which is what I'm thinking. I'm in. Right. So the um. um we, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. We go to the second chart. Yeah. But uh, we or are we talking more about this? No, chart? no. The second chart. Let's do the second chart. Okay. So I have this. Right. Right. This is a kind of this is a bigger view. Uh, yes. What's going on? And to me, it's bearish. Um, the reason why the the second window up from the bottom is the uh, 21 day average of the trend. The next window higher is the 63 day of the trend, and both those. Trends got into bearish territories here on this rally. And those red lines show the times when those trend readings got into bearish territories. Most of the time it came at uh, close to highs or right at highs, whatever. Uh, so, in other words, market, when a trend stays low for a long period of time, it kind of implies exuberance, I guess. Okay. And the market needs, needs to knock off that exuberance. So, as always, market goes from exuberance. To, uh, to panic, back to exuberance, back to panic. And this goes back and forth you know, over over time. So if the market's going up and there's no exuberance, it's going to keep going. And once you get the kind of exuberance, it's it's a time to be uh, cautious. So I marked the times in the past with uh, those red lines uh, saying what you know. Most of the time they came right you know close to the highs. So I'm thinking this is a worthwhile high that's forming here, even though we may rally next week. Um, we're probably going to rally next week, uh, hit us some sort of a high up around that, uh, what, 454 SPY range and probably go back down. And I'm hoping on the next decline, you know, we get panic. And like we said in the past, you know, for a bottom to form, you got to have panic. If you don't have panic, it's going to go down until you do get panic. Because the only place that bottom forms is on panic. Uh, bottoms don't form just out of nowhere. Uh, you know, the bottom form when everybody's kicking and screaming. Yes. So it, uh, it's him. When, you know, it seems that the the folks have been panicking very quickly these days, right? Yeah, yeah. So I don't think this is going to be a, you know, a big decline at all. I, I think it's, it's going to be a pretty big, you know, not a healthy, you know, the only, I'm only talking maybe six seven percent pullback yeah but yeah you're right it, you're we're starting to see panic pretty close off the high so i don't think this is i know be a big at all. <laughs> yeah just stay there for a second we get a quick break tim wood myself we're going to be right back folks our phone number is 877-927-6648 dow's up 79 nasdaq's up 29 snps are up five we're coming right back Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Oward, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growl and a prowl on us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 58, NASDAQ up 16, S&Ps are flat. We are talking with Tim, and we have a long-term chart here of the S&Ps that we're talking about in the trend. Um, okay. Go ahead. I'm ready. Uh, all right. Actually, if we're done with that chart. We can go to chart four, actually. Okay. we we'll change. Uh, I have so, it. That's, that's pretty much all I think I need to say about the long-term chart. It got, got kind of exuberant up there because the trend got so low yes. over an extended period of time. And it needs to just adjust. So n- nothing other than that. And I think the adjustment, you know, you're right. You know, we got panic kind of right off the low, according to the, tr- or right off the high. We got trend rings kind of high already. And that's a really good sign because if you're getting panic right off of a high, you know that, the decline is probably not going to be that severe. So that's a good point you made. But anyhow, uh, moving on to chart four. This is a chart, um, and actually it's the bottom window is the 50-day average of the up-down volume. And I circled in in uh, red the times uh, this indicator got below minus 20. And each time it did, it was uh, a bottom. It was a bottom in that the market 
quit going down, but it didn't go up right away. It went sideways, and sometimes went sideways. Back in 2016, it went sideways for like six months. And we've been going sideways now because this happened about June 15th when we hit below minus 20. And pretty much we've been going sideways since about mid-May. So it's been, well, now we're mid-August almost. So it's almost been three months. The market really hasn't gone any, anywhere. And so, but what's important here is the market's gone sideways. This indicator is going, has been going up, which is a positive divergence. But the rally really, uh, from my experience, really doesn't begin until um, both those indicators, which the next one above that is the 50-day average up down volume advanced client indicator. Right. But the bottom one, once you get above zero, that's usually when the impulse wave starts. And when I sent you this chart, it was, what, 2.84. And uh, as I'm looking right now, we're on one point. Uh, this is minus 1.88 when I sent you that chart as minus two, um, 2.84. So we're awful close to zero. And so once this gets above zero and, and holds above zero, that is the time the impulse wave starts. So That's a pretty cool thinking, indicator, Tim, as the aspect, yeah. because what happens, folks, when we go sideways, sideways many times is building cause for the next move. So it right. frustrates everyone. We know that, Tim, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. So it would be going sideways, but this in internals are actually getting stronger because these, you know, yes. if, if they were weak, they'd be holding, you know, down close to, you know, minus 15 or something like that. They're not. They're, okay. They're, you know, so it's kind of a washout move to the downside. And the market's gone sideways, and you're building a base here. And this kind of chart kind of shows that. So the blue uh, shaded areas. You know, I didn't shade them all, but if just the major ones. The blue shaded areas are the times when this indicator is above zero. Okay. And you can see uh, all those shaded areas are when the um, GDX was in a rally mode. And sometimes these rally modes last just a couple of months, and sometimes they lasted, you know, uh, quite a long time. You know, especially the one back in, in what, 2000, uh, yeah, 2019. That rally, you know, lasted over a year or so. Oh, yeah. Don't know how long this one's going to last. Right. But I'm, think, I'm thinking we're going to rally above the previous highs on GDX, which is 36. So I'm thinking um, there's a trend line up there, too. So we'll have to wait and see. But this is by name. By name uh, it's, it's not bearish. It's just bullish. So, um, and everybody's kind of, you know, especially if you get lethargic, people, you know, the gold market's dead and all this other stuff. Oh, yeah. That's no, kind of this, the feeling this, right. uh, of what the, the market's doing, so. Right. You know, yeah. hey, I want can I switch gears on you for a second? It's going to be interesting. What's going to, how is the, the, the ratio on the VIX coming out? Because this is so weird today. I mean, you know, we've had a 60-point move, and the VIX is still in the red. <laughs> so it's like, you talk about, that's almost saying there's no fear. It's so weird. Like the VIX is trading the, 1557. The VIX, right, yeah, that's what you want to see. You know, if when the S S and P's hit a well, we're actually it just touched or a closing low right now. You want you want to actually when the market's going down and the VIX is not going down, it's bullish. When the market's going up and the VIX is going up, that's bearish. So the VIX right now is is kind of saying the same thing. The VIX is. Yeah, we're up. Uh, we're pretty much unchanged from yesterday. I, I, right. Well, so far as the market's, uh, it's not saying a lot. But the VIX is actually lower now than it was several days ago. If you notice that. Yeah. You know, no, I know. That's that's. I mean, and you know, I'm I'm looking at a market that just sold off that many points. That's that's my point of it. I guess it's like okay, well, that's pretty wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The VIX gets quite a bit of inf information, so. I watch it. I, I do stuff, you know, the trend, I'm so familiar with it because I've been looking at it for quite a long time. Yes. Uh, and the VIX is not new to me. I'm just trying to figure out some new uh, indicators right. with it. And I have right. some your midterm indicators that work really well. And um, and I notice that if, if the VIX is uh, going with the market, you know, if the VIX is, is going down uh, along with the SP, that's bullish. Because the VIX should be going up when the market's going down, right? Yes. So, and if the market's going up and the VIX is going up with it, 
that's a divergence too. That means the market could uh, turn back down. So uh, if you notice again, you know, last, you know, we're about, I don't know, this the last four days, you know, well, five days ago, one, two, three, four, yeah, you know, five days ago, the VIX was over 17, looks like on a close. Now we're 16, and the S&Ps is pretty much setting at its lows. So, right. Uh, so that, to me, is bullish because the VIX should be higher, I get lower. it. Okay, cool. Okay. So yeah. So it's kind of confirming that yeah. we're probably, you know, and we're hitting this gap uh, today, and that gap, again, is 91 million shares, so I like to see volume 10% lighter. Because when you test the gaps, like testing a previous high on 10% lighter volume, gaps work the same way. If you test the gap on 10% lighter volume, that gap has support. So, so we're going to come in. We started, this. let's see. We're at, well, we're at 75 million now on the SPY. So we're going to end up okay, with... That, yeah, the July 12th is where that gap formed. July 12th. And that had 91 million shares. I'm looking at the SPY. Yeah, no, that's what I have up. Cool. Okay. Okay. I get it. Right. All right. Yeah. So, uh, so you want to come in, you know, 9 million shares less. So it'd be what, 82 million, give or take. Yeah. You know, if it's even 7% liars is, is pretty good. So we're probably you know, going to get in over that though. With 75 already, we get, you know, 20 minutes left, but the last 20 minutes, they'll throw 20 million in there. We're probably going to come in about 90 million. So that's All right, gonna... then that would probably mean today's low could be tested again. Again, okay, okay. So that would, we'll have to wait and see, so. Well, listen, it's always a pleasure, Tim. And folks, it's real easy to get hold of Tim Moyd. You can get his newsletter, go over to our, go, well, go to ord-oracle.com. That's ord-oracle.com. Tim, you have a great weekend, a safe weekend, and we look forward to speaking to you on Tuesday. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks, man. Okay, stay right there, folks, come right back.